Tidal, Cobas, Amazon Streaming HD. Which one's best and which one's for you? Hey, what's up guys, it's Fabio from Nice. How you doing? Great to see you all as usual. Now, if you're looking for a video on all the prices, the audio quality and so on, I'll leave a link above because I already did a video on that prior to this one. Check that out. That should give you the information that you need to know. This video is about me spending two weeks with each platform and deciding which one I like the most and making some comparisons. But of course, before we crack on, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, if you will, if you wish, and I'll bring you these videos twice a week. We've got Tuesday, top to bottom, drinking coffee. Not drinking coffee today, but usually drinking coffee. And then Sunday, we've got a slightly longer format, you know, maybe a tutorial, maybe some kind of cool vlog at someone's studio. Loads of really exciting stuff to come. So hit the bell as well, and it will tell you as soon as those videos have come out. Slightly different backdrop for top to bottom. Why not? Got the studio behind me. I feel like I don't really ever use this angle. Used it in another video recently, and I thought to myself, it's actually quite nice and gives me an idea of where I sit every day, but obviously I'm, I'm facing the other way, unless I'm talking to a client. So HD streaming platforms. Let's start with what I'm using to listen to the music on, because obviously listening to an HD streaming platform with an iPhone and ear pods isn't exactly gonna be the best source of high fidelity. So I decided to run some tests in my studio with my Prism Lyra as my sound card with the sample rate set at 96 kilohertz. This is then linked to my speakers via Nutrik and Van Damme cables, which I know I talk about a lot, but they're good. They're really good. High quality cables, guys. Buy into them. They'll also last you forever. And then I ran the audio to my focals. In the past two weeks, I spent loads of time going through the app on mobile because that's important. We want to be able to transition to the mobile app, even if we're not listening with really high quality headphones and the desktop applications for each streaming service. Let's jump right in. Before we talk about Tidal, I really just want to show you a clip from one of the funniest parody videos that came out when Tidal was released and uh, not that many people know about it. So I'm gonna keep dropping them as I talk about this platform. Jay-Z is worth only $560 million. When he tried to join the billionaires club, they laughed at him, laughed. He can now only afford one shower of money a day. Upon opening Tidal, you've just got this amazing, super sleek, dark mode interface. Everything is kind of there. It's very simple. It's not like the Apple Music interface, which just sucks bull****. Um, no complaints. No complaints at all. Very easy to use, very easy to navigate, search for your music, add to your collection, create playlists, download other music and also really easy to find out exactly what resolution it's streaming at. If you're playing singles rather than albums, it doesn't always tell you prior to clicking on them what quality it's gonna be at, but you can assume that if you have the hi-fi package, it's always gonna be at the hi-fi quality as a minimum. I found that some of the newer releases had the master setting, which is played at a sample rate of 96 kilohertz and 24 bits. We'll get on to discussing the quality and comparing them all at the end of this video. Definitely more more of an urban theme going on throughout the app, but that doesn't mean that you can't listen to Queen or the Eagles or any other classic rock bands, things that aren't modern. Obviously, urban music is also the most popular music right now in the charts, so maybe they're just presenting the chart music and that will change as soon as bands become more popular. And then we'll see a majority of rock and band music on the homepage. Quality's great, sounds good. Most of the stuff I was listening to was 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bit. Sounded fine to me. I mean, look, when I stepped up to the higher 96 kilohertz, there was definitely a slight change, but most people I know actually master and mix at 44.1 24-bit. My favorite part about the Tidal app is how easily you can access the song credits and you can find out exactly who did what on the record, the mixing engineer, the songwriters, the producers, so on and so forth. And for me, that's really important because I want to know who helped make the record. And then you can even click on their name and it will take you to all their other work. So obviously an engineer doesn't necessarily release albums, but they've worked on so many different people's albums and you can follow their journey a little bit or see what they're up to currently. Then you get an idea of an engineer's sound as well, not just an artist's sound or a producer's sound as opposed to just a singer's sound, which 
is awesome. You also have access to high quality music videos, but I never really watch music videos unless someone specifically tells me, you have gotta check this music video out, it's so cool. And that's usually my little sister who's far, far cooler than me, but probably not that difficult. Do you guys still watch music videos? Does does anyone? Admittedly, I could have spent more time on the platform so that the algorithm picked up exactly what I'm listening to and how to create sort of those uh, genius playlists. But whatever, you know, I think at first glance, do you connect with it or not? As I said before, definitely aimed at an urban market. I, I guess the target market would be 21 to 30 years old. I I'm just speculating here, but this is just how it feels to me. And uh, let's not forget. Madonna may be worth $800 million. But have you seen the price of retirement communities and 24-hour care? Their suffering needs to stop. Now. Even though I don't really feel that saying one platform is aimed at a particular genre or whatever, I do think they're aimed at particular people or age groups and Cobras is definitely aimed at the music connoisseur, the collector who still has some dusty records that they won't let go of and have a somewhat refined taste in music while still potentially being quite open-minded. I've never really collected classic vinyls, but tapes and CDs, pretty much my whole childhood. And one of the most important things about the tapes and CDs was the booklet that came on the inside, which had the lyrics and various other artistic and branding details that would draw you into that artist and their work. I feel like Cobra's really placed at this. It feels somewhat more classic. It's just a bit more old school, but in a really, really tasteful way. My favorite part about Cobra is uh, they have this kind of blog article section and you can read an article on a particular artist or a particular bit of music. And as you slowly make your way through the article, you'll find that at the bottom, there's links to that music. So Cobus definitely feels like it's trying to encourage some discovery, regardless of what you do or don't listen to. Immediately on the homepage, as soon as I opened it up, it was more band, classic focused styles of music. I could have used it more so the algorithm picked up what I wanted to see, but it felt very simple and not too much going on on the homepage, which I really like because when it's too fussy, you just get lost and then Choice is not such a great thing. Limitations, as I've said in probably numerous videos, are a great thing. Uh, I did a little scrolling and uh, ended up playing something called like Focus and uh, the old, old, old Batman theme tune was part of this Focus playlist that someone had made. <laughs> Uh, again, nicely done credit section, similar to title, but you can't click on the person to take you to the rest of their work. Kind of annoying, but whatever. Again, sound quality was great. A lot of the stuff was at the higher resolution at 96 kilohertz, which I wasn't surprised by. And um, that was nice. I played a bit of Niels Fram. I played some Bob Marley. It all sounded great. It seems really pedantic and kind of silly, um, but there's no dark mode. It's like a bright white interface. And if you're working in a dark studio like I, I am, uh, you know, usually I don't have all these studio lights on. It can be a bit distressing and a bit kind of in your face and then you have to turn the brightness down on your computer, but then everything else is in dark mode, so you have to turn the brightness back up. Just one of those things, Cobos, give us a dark mode or did I miss the dark mode? Did I not see the setting? I, I tried to look for it, but couldn't find it. It's a really nice interface, would recommend it to anyone. And one thing I noticed is that it definitely feels album focused, whereas Tidal feels a bit more singles focused, so that kind of market. Albums take a lot longer to listen to, which means you need more time, and articles take longer to read, which also means that you need a bit more time. So my guess is that this is aimed at a slightly older lady or gentleman who has more of a hobby or passion in appreciating and listening to music. Again, great on mobile, no complaints here. Mobile apps are pretty good these days. So straight off the bat, um, I actually had such an issue. I was signed up to Amazon Music unlimited, but that was not Amazon HD. And then it didn't tell me I had to download a desktop app, so I had to create another account with someone else. It was all a bit confusing, and I think Amazon need to specifically make an Amazon HD music page and an Amazon regular music page or something, because I got confused. Maybe I'm just being silly, but didn't feel so streamlined. Definitely aimed more at a pop commercial audience. Uh, I, I wouldn't say there's a specific age here. I think it's more people who like to listen to the radio and just want to hear the hits. There's obviously a, a large selection of music. I mean, it's like 50 million songs or something, so it's not that you wouldn't be able to access that it's just when you go to the homepage, you can immediately 
see or get a sense of who this user interface is speaking to and the aesthetic choices behind it that make you engage with it in a certain way. For me, it was a, a bit cheesy and a bit colorful, but you know, we all like something different. Um, so you have the little Ultra HD button and it tells you which one's a high quality and which one isn't, but all the songs that I played at Ultra HD were never at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. And maybe that's because I didn't spend enough time on it, but it was always like a maximum of 48 kilohertz and 24 bit, which again is really more than enough. Although I felt like it said Ultra HD, but it wasn't. It was just what the other two platforms, Cobas and Tidal, would consider regular HD. It has song credits, it's kind of badly done, just kind of like thrown to the side and uh, designed in the cheapest and quickest way possible, which I get. Amazon HD is more of a general consumer platform, so people probably don't give a shit. Having said that, my favorite part of Amazon HD is the lyric section. You have on the mobile app and on the computer, all the lyrics which follow and are highlighted as the song is playing. As a young boy, uh, I, I would have loved this, although my parents might not have because I would have been consistently singing in the back of the car at the top of my voice. Being able to follow the lyrics, is, it's fun, it's great. It takes me back to that booklet inside the album cover or, uh, you know, for some of you who used to collect vinyl, you also had the lyrics in there sometimes. Similar to titles, definitely more singles focused rather than albums, but that's kind of the way the general consumer market is. One thing I noticed is that from platform to platform, you could play the same song and some platforms would be playing it at 96 kilohertz, some would be 44 and some would be 48. And that would be their maximum resolution, which had me a little bit confused. If the option is there for all of them to be uploaded at 96 kilohertz, and there's obviously a 96 kilohertz version, why isn't that the case across all platforms? Do they have to pay more money? Is it more expensive for a label or artist to upload at a higher resolution? That was a little unclear and I, I didn't quite get why. The streaming quality across all of them is great. Uh, I'm, I'm not that much of a snob. 44.1 kilohertz at 16 or 24 bit is fine for me to be honest. Having said that, when you do play a record at 96 kilohertz um, on Kobo's Tidal, and again, I, I couldn't find one on Amazon HD, but whatever. There is a slight difference as in the stereo image feels a little bit wider and there's more overall dimensionality. So it feels more 3D essentially. I guess it was deeper and uh, there was a bigger sense of space. And when I was listening in 96 kilohertz, I felt somewhat a little more encapsulated, but maybe that's just because I knew that I was listening to 96 kilohertz and I wouldn't otherwise have placed the sort of importance of that numerical value on the playback of the record. So it's potential that that could be somewhat psychosomatic. What interests me is I wonder how many people are now gonna start mastering at 96 kilohertz 24 bit because they know that they have the option to upload to these platforms at that quality so people can stream the music as they're hearing it. I wonder if there'll be a shift in popularity amongst engineers and artists, but I guess we'll see as HD streaming becomes more ubiquitous, which it isn't quite yet. So in conclusion, Amazon definitely takes the win for being the cheapest, 14 99. Although I said 12.99 in my old video, I'm pretty sure it's 14.99 because I signed up to the wrong service. 14.99 per month, and you got that lyric thing, which I love. And if I had kids, which I don't, and hopefully won't have too soon, I think they would love it too. And we would all sing along together, like in one of those cheesy American road trip films. She's got a smile that it seems to me reminds me of childhood memories. Cobas is, like I said, for the collector, for the connoisseur, someone who is looking to spend more time listening to music, as in some people play tennis, some people do cooking classes, and some people sit down, put a nice pair of headphones on, and listen to music in their living room. There are people who do that. I mean, I do that sometimes. Not, not as often as I should, but yeah. I imagine myself doing that a lot when I'm older. It's the most expensive out of all of them, 25 pounds a month. And uh, I, I like it, I really like Cobas. I've got nothing against it, it's just that it's a little more expensive. And personally for me right now, every penny counts. No guess which one I'm gonna stick with, but before that I have something to say, which is goodbye Apple Music. You suck.
Sadly, that means that I won't be able to uh, go on a run and listen to music on my Apple Watch because the Apple Watch doesn't support Tidal, Spotify, Cobras, any of those platforms because Apple are such monopolizing b****. Oh, and I bet Apple Music HD will probably come out next year and I'll have to migrate back to the Apple Music platform. Okay, the reason I went with Tidal is love the interface. Love the credit section, fairly reasonably priced. If you do a family plan and you pay 30 pounds a month, you can have five people on that plan. So you could divide it up between yourselves and pay roughly six, seven pounds each. There's no fast, no thrills necessarily. It's just so easy to use and I also really like other music, so, you know, I feel like it's directed to me and that's okay. I make techno, but I never ever listen to techno, weirdly enough. I just listen to urban music, I don't know. Although I mix a lot of urban music too, so maybe that's why. Wow, that took a lot of research. I'm not gonna lie, that was like two and a half hours of research and writing just for doing that video. Not a pity party or anything, I just, uh, there's a lot of facts I had to cover and I wanted to get right for you guys, but if I missed anything, let me know in the comments down below because I did the best I could and uh, you know, this is why I like noise because you guys help fill in the missing blanks. So let me know. It's been a pleasure as always, great to see you. And uh, before you go, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll bring you these videos twice a week. Hit the bell. Then you even get notified. So much easier. It's a big love from noise. Peace. I just get so thirsty talking. Every time I, just, I catch myself out and then my, my mouth feels like the Sahara Desert.